And welcome back to RFL. In this segment, I wanted to focus on process. We lift the black uh, robe, if you will, here, how the system really works, so to speak. And first up, the Skakel case. And if people saw the time story, we've covered the trial. I remember covering it daily um, when it was being uh, heard. But the point of the trial today was the amount of money that was spent locating witnesses around the globe here, going as far as Europe and beyond to find them and bring them back. Also expert witnesses, et cetera. Implication being, Doug, that regular um, defendants don't get this kind of a benefit. What is the most important thing if you have a well-funded uh, defendant that an attorney can do? Well, I would change that a little bit. You'd have to look at what you're Third being time, tried for. my question, for. go ahead. But yeah. you know, yeah. what you're being <laughs> tried for, listen, you need a great lawyer who's been there before, who knows, who's seen it all before. But there's certain crimes where a lot of money can go through a lot of documents, can go do a lot of prep. You can send a lot of investigators out in the field. But there's certain crimes where it's a one ID, one one victim saying he did it, and it's it's going to take a lawyer on his feet to do a cross examination and get it there. And I know all the money you throw at it in the world is. But you're help. a former prosecutor. What were the cases where you looked across and said, oh, geez, this, is, this one's going to be a pain in the you-know-what here because they got more money uh, than God here to spend? Which, w w is it that they bury you in paper, that, bury that, you in motions? It. I mean, if, uh, that's real, the reality. If you have a lot of cases and you're a prosecutor and you're, you're kind of swimming a little bit and you get a well-funded defendant who comes in and starts hitting you with motions and you have to respond and you also have other caseloads, that's where I think it, it comes into play. But listen, U.S. attorneys, you know, a lot of people have a lot of resources these days, so, you know. Well, that, that's the th that, to me, is the biggest thing, you know. Uh, and again, it depends on the type of case. I mean, you certainly want somebody who's experienced, and if you spend your money wisely and you have a lot of it, I do think that it matters tremendously. Uh, in, in, in the Skakel case and many other cases, uh, you need to throw money at investigation. That is where the government that is where the prosecution has this enormous wealth of resources. They investigate and they give it to you at the very end when you're going to trial. You need an investigative team that can take that material and in the space of a week or two go out there and conduct a real investigation. And it is so expensive. It is so difficult to find witnesses, interview them properly, make sure that you have not only an investigator but a witness with them. It's enormously well, expensive. Well, you know, I know, Mayor, you've got a couple of very high-profile cases going on right now where eyewitness testimony and expert uh, testimony is going to be critical for the Absolutely. jury to figure out what really happened or what was going through the minds of um, the particular folks involved in the case. That's expensive, right? It's very expensive. Um, what I will say, though, is that generally, uh, even when you look at Mr. Skakel, you could be a multimillionaire. Generally, the government has more resources than you do. Your resources over time... It's funny. The perception of the general public is that, you know, you got civil servants. I mean, they're attorneys, but as soon as they got enough on the resume, they're going to go in private practice and make a ton. So you've got people, you know, uh, that are far more high-power attorneys on the other side of it. Not so? I wouldn't say that. I think that, especially now, uh, you'll find that there are a lot of prosecutors who are seasoned, and they are outstanding. And not only do you have that one, you have a team of prosecutors on the more uh, significant cases and high-profile cases. You'll have two, sometimes three, assistant district attorneys and an appeals bureau. So most of the time, the prosecutors who are handling that case, that homicide or whatever it may be, they're not up at night doing the motion. The defense attorney is. Okay, mm -hmm. but they have uh, an entire bureau that's doing research. They have a, a body of investigators that are going out that are former detectives who were generally the best wherever they were. And we have to hope that if it's a DNA case that we can afford to go out and hire I got, a listen great a minute, expert. guys. If a client comes to you three, and I know it depends mm -hmm. on the case, but play along, Doug, and mm -hmm. they say, here's a blank check. Do whatever you got to do um, to give me my best shot at trial. Do you immediately go hire... Um, you know, paralegals, assistants, people who are working on paperwork, or do you go out and say, I want the best team of investigators out in the field here, um, I want the best, uh, I want to find the following witnesses, I don't care if you got to go to Timbuktu, where do you spend that money first with the clock ticking on a trial? Investigators, facts make cases. Absolutely. Doc review is doc review. The docs don't change, they're there, you'll review them, you need to review the documents in order to know where to investigate. 
but I agree entirely. But I, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to agree with Doug. It really depends on the case. <laughs> I say investigators, and you got to go to the scene. You want to make sure that everything that's there is uncovered. You want to know if there's video footage, possibly, if there's a bank that maybe has a camera that goes out to that area. Maybe you don't go to trial because you get exculpatory information from that video and experts. You need a great expert, depending on the nature of the case. I'm not a proponent of having my clients spend money unnecessarily, though. So Look if it's not going to be Look a case, if it's uh, not a case for an investigator, then I'd, we don't need to hire one. But if it is, you want the very best, because that makes the difference. If you get a great investigator. Attorneys worried about <laughs> billing for clients. I better go to break right now. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about some trends here that we're keeping an eye on. And one of them has to do, I'll give you a hint, with bullying. Stay with us.